What is going on, Fight Fans? What an amazing fight. It was an awesome live that we had for the fight uh, for Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury. So if you guys were there, kudos. We all had a blast. It was really, really fun. Um, and it was shocking. It was shocking because Francis Ngannou shocked the world. The way he performed in that fight was nothing short of simply the greatest crossover boxing uh, event uh, or performance of all time. It is one of those things that will be carved in the stones of sports history because even if someone else was to do this again, Nganu was the first to do it. Before Nganu's crossover success with this fight against Fury, Nganu, uh, Anderson Silva, in my opinion, was the only other person to do somewhat successfully. But he beat a person who used to be a pro boxer, who was retired for years, and was it really that discipline even when they were in the professional ranks to begin with when he beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. What Francis Ngannou did was he arguably to most people or arguably to a lot of people and even if not that he won, he ha gave a competitive match against the lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. That is unheard of when he's never boxed before never he trained in you know mma and kickboxing and all that but he's never boxed before so it's unheard of for him to do this with the understanding that we've all had looking at all the small case studies of crossover boxing or crossover fights where someone comes from MMA to fight uh, a, a pro boxer all of the circumstantial evidence led us to believe that Francis Ngannou had no opportunity had no shot if anybody's out there saying oh I knew it I knew that he was gonna do this good what did you use to know that he was gonna be this good this is not like you're predicting a boxer fighting another boxer. You have to not only predict that he would do good, you have to know what he would be doing when he becomes a boxer, something you've never seen him do. Like, people can say, oh, well, it, I know because I could tell from his motivation. He's a super motivated guy. Everybody who's super motivated, right? Everyone's super. Conor McGregor was super motivated, which is what made him a double UFC champion, right? Uh, everybody's super motivated. So don't give me the super motivated stuff. There was really no way at, at all because there was no historical data to pull from to see if Francis Ngannou was going to be good against Tyson Fury. There was just no way. So anyone who's like, you know, making fun of people, like all I see on Twitter is a bunch of Francis Ngannou people that wanted him to win, making fun of uh, boxing reporters that predicted that, predicted using evidence that this will more than likely be a, a wash and, and a circus fight because when Ben Askren fought a very green fighter in uh, in Jake Paul he lost in the first round by knockout when Tyron Woodley tried to fight Jake Paul he was he lost the first fight got knocked out in the second fight when Anderson Silva tried to fight so we've seen it happen before, right? We've seen it. Okay, this is normally what happens. They just can't get the transition over. They can't do it. When McGregor fought Floyd, we just, it, it doesn't, they can't do it. They don't know how to figure this out. It's a completely different sport and they're, they're not, you know, ready for that. 
So a foolish prediction is the prediction that you made, but a once in a lifetime thing finally happened. A, a, a one in a million lightning in a bottle thing finally happened. And it is that someone was good enough to transition over and beat or do very well against the top guy in the professional sport that they're not part of. And that's happened before in other sports where people could do two sports at the same time. It is appearing to me that the best crossover fighter ever is probably Francis and Ghana. So let's get all that weirdness out of the way in the beginning. I just want to get that out where people, I knew it. I, what did you know? I saw him hit the bag. I, I, that's another thing that I hate with people. You see people hit the, the, the boxing mitts. Oh my God, you can tell he's going to win the fight. Okay, all right. You can tell he's going to win the fight because he's hitting boxing mitts pretty hard. Gotcha. Uh, but regardless... It was such an impressive performance. Because we're going to go the other direction with this as well. There's a lot of people that were like, nah, Ngannou was, he was kind of trash. And it, it, it was just that Tyson Fury wasn't uh, uh, prepared. I, that's another, stop it with that he wasn't prepared. Was he not prepared to the degree that he should be? Sure, but he's fought through many fights with top level competition like Vladimir Klitschko uh, went through wars with with Deontay Wilder, right? Tyson Fury has enough muscle memory, enough practice, enough uh, know-how, enough savvy, enough experience, enough knowledge, enough uh, 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 atmospheric experience, enough everything to just be like, after the first instance of resistance that was well, not what he did not expect, he could have at that moment gone to the things that he knew knows. Because even if he didn't prepare, there's still things that he just has already ready to go at any moment. He didn't have to prepare to be Tyson Fury. He's already become Tyson Fury. All he has to do is prepare for his conditioning to be to be good for the fight he's already Tyson Fury if he needs to make an adjustment he has those abilities to make that adjustment he's Tyson Fury so don't give me the whole it's because he didn't prepare even if he didn't even if he didn't he still this what happened in the ring still should not have happened in the ring It's a few things, though. Francis Ngannou probably has the, mo the, bit, the, the most brolic shock-absorbing neck ever because nothing was hurting him, which is devastating. This is the crazy thing. He's kind of like a Deontay Wilder with a little bit more technical prowess, with more technical, much more technical prowess because there were smart things he was setting up uh, he was timing him, for example, the knockdown. He blocked the first uh, one-two uh, attack by Tyson Fury, but he timed it. He 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 knew that if Tyson Fury came in with, for that same sequence, he was going to time him again because Tyson Fury had done done it multiple times earlier. So Tyson Fury would go boom, boom, come out, boom, boom, come out. So he's like, okay, I'm going to play off of that. He blocked the first time, and then he anticipated the second time. He blocked, and then came in with the hook, with the left hook, as Tyson Fury came in. He was six, equally successful being southpaw and orthodox. And by that, I mean, it didn't matter what hand hit uh, uh, Tyson Fury. He was going to hurt him. He was hurting him with the left hand. He was hurting him with the right hand. In my opinion, what ha what basically happened was from the beginning of the fight, Tyson Fury got hit with one of Ngannou's punches, and then he got a little bit more cagey because he realized that like this is pretty this is pretty dangerous. And when he got knocked down, it was even more of like a 
walking on ice, you're walking on eggshells kind of situation. And by the way, guys, the amount of technical ability that Nganu has could be enough to be a top heavyweight fighter because they're not really technical in the heavyweight division. If anything, the most technical people out there that you can see in the heavyweight division is probably Tyson Fury himself. He's probably the most technical, Tyson Fury, Usyk. Those are probably the two most technical people that you could find. Everybody else, for the most part, they're not the most technical. They're not the fastest, right? They just hit hard. A lot of them just hit hard. That's why somebody like Deontay Wilder, who lacks good technical ability, could do go as far as he did, could win the world title. So even with this being his pro debut and being very raw into pro boxing, he could actually go and take a shot at becoming one of the top heavyweights, if not the top heavyweight. He's going to be in there with a lot of confidence. He was able to perform well. I think Francis Ngannou has a shot at being a good pro boxer that makes does good pay-per-view numbers and brings a great, like, big audience to the heavyweight division. He could actually resurrect the heavyweight division. If he continues fighting, which he said he will continue fighting, uh, he'll do both at the same time. He'll be doing MMA and boxing, which is fantastic. But his performance against Tyson Fury, although it was a split decision win by one point for Fury, I scored it for Nganu, but they gave it to Fury, and that's fine. For boxing, that's the best uh, possible decision that could be made because th 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 there's a, such an unknown with Ngannou if he would have won that fight. But he definitely, they definitely need to start putting Ngannou in uh, against uh, top contenders. He was, uh, I believe they stated that Mauricio Suleiman told him that he will be now ranked in the top 10 in the WBC after that performance because he, you know, did that to the WBC champion. So we're going to move in from from you know from that uh, from that performance to getting him a possible title fight in the future in the very near future, um, and I think that that is going to be fantastic. He was just smart. He adjusted. It wasn't something where he just he. I thought he only could try to blast him and blitz him in the beginning, because that's. That's our historical data of crossover fighters. You don't get really got a chance, but you're awkward. Use your awkwardness to your advantage. Get them early before they can time you. But Nganu outboxed. I don't care what nobody says. He outboxed Fury because he was timing him. He was baiting him. He was trapping him multiple times multiple times the only thing that i saw that he had that was a flaw that was very apparent and can could have cost him the fight and could be something that he needs to clean up it's something he definitely needs to clean up was just his cardio i kid you not there was also the slapping down stuff but he he started adjusting and not doing that over the course of the fight, which was impressive for his brain to think to do that in the heat of battle. But it was his cardio. He was just super tired. But even when he was super tired, he was incredibly intelligent with when he used his energy bursts to be as accurate as possible, to land the biggest shots, as big of shots as possible, to make sure that he maximizes and optimizes the energy that he had uh, throughout the fight. He cut off the ring. Tyson Fury didn't do anything that he doesn't normally do. He did his twitchy stuff, his movie, moving around, his hopping around stuff, his jabs and stuff. But Ngannou was slipping a lot of his attacks and not even flinching from the, the, the feints, which is just like this thing that's, it throws you off because how do you get something to open up when the person's not even worried if you hit them? 
that's how Francis Ngannou is. He is a. It's like it, it, it might possibly be a more scarier version of Wilder because both of his hands hurt, both of them, and then he's not even worried if you hit him to top it off. That's not. That's not fun <laughs> for anybody. So kudos to Francis Ngannou, made history, being the best crossover performance we've ever seen. Bar none. I've not. I don't care what anybody says. Anderson Silver versus Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. was not it. It was the best one until this one. This it probably will not ever be topped by any MMA fighter ever uh, because it was just so high up there. Right? He beat a current lineal champion in in Tyson Fury. I say beat, but you know what I mean. He did phenomenally against uh the lineal champion that's what i thought about the fight we're gonna be live by the way of course as always tomorrow monday 7 p.m eastern time to 8 p.m eastern time hit that subscribe button hit that like button for these videos they help a lot and join us tomorrow so we could talk together about how how awesome uh that night was i mean i was just i was floored i was shocked it was a really, really, really good time. Kudos to Francis Ngannou. Can't wait to see him in the PFL. Want to see what he does there. And definitely can't wait to see what he does next in boxing. Until the next one, guys. Peace.